on the 23 non-compliant state of corporations. Mr. Speaker, uh, the reasons why we require compliance under Article 226 of the Constitution is for accountability, because this is taxpayers' money. It's also for efficiency in running every institution. And to highlight 23 out of 400 state corporations that have not, that have not provided uh, audited accounts uh, shows that we do have a, a, a failure. I'd like to speak to one particular one that really uh, uh, shows that we also have not devolved um, our sagas to independent units. If you look at Madara National Teaching and Referral Hospital, it was a state corporation from 2020, and up to today it is micromanaged by the Ministry of Health. And uh, because of that, we have a lot of disservice uh, to the people of Nairobi and the people of Kenya because it's, uh, it deals with mental health and uh, it is completely understaffed. According to, uh, to my data, the hospital requires over 366 staff, uh, requires over 1,416 staff, and right now they only have 366. Uh, and at the same time, a lot of commodities are missing in the hospital, and the reason they are missing in the hospital is because procurement is, uh, uh, is done by the Ministry of Health. Now, when you look at the 1.6 billion uh, that is unaccounted for, I think uh, we, we're looking at the saga, but at the same time, it is the Ministry of Health that is holding uh, the finances, holding the human resources, in spite of the fact that the hospital actually has a board of directors and CEOs. So I feel that even uh, with the, uh, the physiotherapists uh, uh, association, we've been told that for years they have never filed any audited reports. With the kind of accidents that we have and with the PWDs requiring physiotherapy, it is really a concern. Uh, and I think the reason why they're probably not auditing is because the funds are being kept at the Ministry of Health and being diverted and used for other, uh, other uh, probably more uh, pressing issues. If we would want to look at the importance of making an institution autonomous, if you look at the Kenyatta University Teaching referral, refer, Research and Referral Hospital, it is actually independent. It has its own board, it has its own money, it makes its own budgets. So even then you can ask for accounts. But I think for us to be asking accounts for entities that don't control their own resources uh, and even their own expenditure becomes a problem. So, and in that case, if budgets are also made at the, at the executive level, then we are never going to achieve universal health care. So I think it's important to really scrutinize and to ask ourselves, while we talk about devolution, bringing services right down to the grassroots, can we also look at devolving uh, the executive devolving entities. In Nairobi, we need the Madare uh, um, uh, National Teaching Referral Hospital, the Spinal Injury Hospital. All these have to be made uh, autonomous so that they can be able to actually put budgets, uh, employ their own staff, make their own expenses, and then be accountable. So for me, I think it's important that the, the ESCC looks very strictly uh, um, into the 1.6 billion because in the health sector we cannot afford to have 1.6 billion unaccounted for and I really want to commend the Public Investment Committee for coming up with this report and highlighting the 23 um, uh, entities that are not compliant, but, uh, state corporations that are not compliant because I know that you will find that it is the executive that is holding them ransom and not allowing this child that should grow. I mean really Madare and spinal injury should be let to run their own affairs so that they can provide the much needed services when it comes to spinal injuries and when it comes to mental health. Thank you. I support. What? Oh, who is up on the point of order? Professor, Honorable, yes. What's your point of order? Uh, Mr. Speaker, pass one to standing order number 95 in the mood of the House I would wish that we call the speaker, the, the, the mover, to, to reply. Yes. Uh, yes. Well, it becomes sometimes uh, mechanical for the speaker to respond to your point of orders, and therefore uh, a member has again, for the second time, reason for misplace. 
to call upon the mover to reply. Will as many as of that opinion say aye? aye. Will as many as of a contrary opinion say nay? The eyes have it, and therefore we call the mover to reply. After you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, on the onset, allow me to appreciate my colleagues. I want to thank all my colleagues who have spoken on to this report and wish to say thank you for that. And they raised about one or two issues which are very pertinent. Honorable Speaker, the issue of uh, objectivity of the report to fight corruption has come out very clearly that indeed if this report is implemented the government of the day shall benefit from the ills of what happened before therefore it's important and upon now the incumbent government to make use of this report and correct where things did not work well for the previous one honorable speaker the last the last issue is the benefit of splitting the group the the three PICs has come out and i want to thank my colleagues that indeed that observation is, is real, is good, and when we work that way, I'm sure we'll put the government of the day to its objectivity and we'll be the watchdog to see what is happening behind the scenes of the current government. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, and I beg to reply. Uh, very well. We shall defer putting of the question. Yes, again, what's the point of order? Yes. Yeah, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, looking around and under Standing Order 53B, I hereby uh, I request you, the Speaker, to defer putting the question. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Turoitich. We shall defer the putting of the question until a later date. Uh, next order. Order number 11, the statute law miscellaneous amendments, number 2 bill, National Assembly Bill number 68 of 2023. Second reading, resumption of debate. 